Hey, g'day everybody, it's Matt here from Matt Carve. So today we are looking at the Arbitec Precision Carving System and I'm going to look what's in the box and then I'm going to do lots of little experiments to see how this thing works and uh, what I think of it and I'm also going to make a little skateboard teaspoon at the end and I think it looks really cool so make sure you stick around for that. Okay, cool, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick unboxing here. Um, so this is the box that it comes in and pretty much you just open it up. It's all uh, cardboard which is pretty cool and what I like about this box is very robust so I think you could really just keep your tools in here because you know with this system all the, all the parts are quite small so you don't want to lose them in the workshop so it's best to keep hold of that box and put your parts in there and pretty much it's made up of that part there which is the adapter and you get these three uh, fittings here you've got a sanding drum a barrel kind of cutter and this mini ball gouge now have a look at this I've got the original ball gouge that I just love I use this a lot so this ball gouge is 30 millimeters and I believe this is about 15 millimeters I'd just like to point this out I think this says it all about Arbitec creators of truly unique quality tools and I've got to say their tools are unique and sometimes uh, you have to have special kind of requirements when you're uh, doing power carving and these tools seem to fit that requirement. For me, I, I can't speak for everybody, each carver is going to be different in what they kind of carve. But for me I do a lot of like uh, concaves. So here's a cup that I made a while ago and I did that with the ball gouge. And I made this beautiful little boat and also made one out of skateboard as well. I'm going to make a skateboard teaspoon today which is pretty cool. And made this uh, chicken bowl which is pretty cool. Okay I thought a good thing to start off would be is to make a concave in a spoon. Uh, this is what a lot of people use the ball gouge for and here we go. So I'm just I've just roughly drawn a spoon there and we're going in quite lightly here and the angle grinder that it's on is on an angle which seems to work best with this although on this one you can actually plunge it down directly down into the wood whereas on the bigger ball gouge you can't do that it kind of tends to leave a flat plane anyway so you see there's a bit of tear out happening there and that's predictable and there's nothing to worry about there because what you can do is you can turn the work, work around and you, what happens there is it pushes the wood down into the concave so you're not going to get that tear out at that lower edge. So I'm not too worried about it at the moment so what I tend to do is I tend to take it all out and then I'll turn it around and then clean up that tear out. So here's the tear out here. And then I just go in and you can see it's just taking that tear out away. So those finishing strokes you want to do it really really lightly and I do I sometimes do sort of like little circles like that and it sort of like evens out the concave of the spoon. Okay so this is the finished product it's uh, pretty good but I kind of think if you were doing spoons you would probably go for the larger ball gouge. I think the smaller ball gouge is really really good for tight spaces like in that boat that I kind of showed you there's some really tight spaces in that. So I'll just show you uh, how the bigger ball gouge works and so you can see that it doesn't require that much to get that real nice sort of like concave happening in that. So really the smaller ball gouge obviously is going to be for smaller things whereas a bigger ball gouge is going to be for bigger things so that's quite obvious I think. Okay so let's have a go with this barrel planer and I thought I'd just try and follow this shape here although I just realized that I can't actually see the line that I'm trying to get to because it's facing the camera which is good for you guys but not that good for me. But uh, as you can see it does tear out but you know what tool doesn't tear out and You've just really got to like play with these new tools that you get and you can work out uh, which is the best way to go whether you're going with the grain or against the grain or all those kind of things. Now I've turned it around and it's actually quite like comfortable to use at this kind of angle. I think uh, it's a really good roughing out tool on these kind of things but in reality I probably wouldn't use it for 
like making a spoon like this, I would just cut it out on a bandsaw or something like that, or a scroll saw. But you know, today I'm just like experimenting with it and see what, what it can do. So when I'm making stuff in the workshop, I can just pull these tools out. And if, if, I, if I think they're gonna work well with something. So here we are, we've got the sanding drum on now and I'm just smoothing it out. It's pretty good because you know, with this, with most sanding drums, you don't really get a kick or anything like that. So you can uh, like fire away with it and uh, not worry about it shooting off or anything like that. Although there are, the, the ball gouge and the barrel do kick. They're not very severe, but you still gotta stay aware and safely do things in the workshop. So here I am, I am doing a soft wood, trying to do a texture on this. And I think texturing is all about the wood choice as well. So there's a lot of tear out on this piece of wood. It's quite a soft wood. Okay, so we're gonna give it a go on a harder wood here. And it is much nicer. You know, I, I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm doing texturing. There are some real experts out there and they make it look easy. And um, to a degree, I'm quite uh, thinking this is turning out all right. And uh, these are like my first goes at texturing with the uh, smaller ball gouge. I found a bigger ball gouge actually a lot really nice as well uh, when it comes to texturing. It gives it sort of like that adds effect, uh, which would look really cool on bigger bowls and all of that kind of stuff. And, and I'm sure like if you spend a bit of time with this smaller ball gouge, you would become very proficient at it. I think that you know what I've done there and the first go is looking pretty good. Okay, so there's a close-up of the texturing, so it's, got, it's pretty good. There's a tiny bit of tear out there, but you know, if you've got a little bit of sandpaper, I'm sure you could get rid of that. Okay, so do some texturing on this cool skateboard wood. Uh, the second layer is pink, as you can see. I think the layer under that is white. But this isn't actually the small ball gouge. This is the large ball gouge. Just to give you a feel of the large ball gouge as well. And it really goes through the wood really, really nicely. It probably takes out the wood faster and maybe cleaner. Okay, so this is the smaller ball gouge and you can see it is, well, leaving smaller holes. <laughs> it's quite obvious, I guess. And uh, it's, I think it's quite clean. And what I noticed with this is uh, once you finish it, you can actually just lightly go over it and take out that tear out. Okay, so another test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and follow a line with the barrel planer and I've just made an oval. And what's great about this barrel planer is you can sort of like go down in layers so you can have a flat bottom in, the, in that oval. So I'm really, really trying hard to just stay in that line and it's not too bad. Um, it's, it's definitely harder than doing some, some but it's uh, working pretty well and I really like how flat the area is ending up. Anyway, so yeah, just watching. I, I, you, yeah, I make mistakes, sure. But yeah, this is the first go of following a line, and uh, yeah, I think I'm doing all right actually. There's always a learning process when you get these new tools, and uh, just learning how they react to certain woods. Uh, this wood is pine, and so it has a lot of tear out, and is a little bit sort of like. I guess fibrous, so around the edges sometimes you'll get a quite a, a fibrous kind of edge to it. So yeah, so that's the finished product there, so it looks pretty cool. Okay, so I thought I'd give a teaspoon a go with the mini ball gouge, because I think the bigger spoons uh, really suit the bigger ball gouge, and I thought, well, why not, why not try a little teaspoon with the uh, small ball gouge? And I thought I'd do it in skateboard wood, because that always looks pretty cool. It's got the nice pink layer there, and what's great about the skateboard wood is you can go down and you can actually tell how how close you are to the uh, other side because you've got those layers there. So I know I'm going to go through green and then white, pink and then white, and then I think a few layers of white. But when I hit that next lot of pink, I've got to kind of stop, stop there and uh, just clean it up. So here I am. I'll just sped up the video here. Okay, so who would this precision carving system actually suit? I think you would probably know yourself whether you would use it or not. I'm going to be using that ball gouge mainly for doing hollows. I'm, I, I'm sort of going to try it out on sort of maybe some bigger carvings, but I think the size of the carvings that I do are quite small, so I tend to use the Dremel with uh, attachments there for those kind of carvings. And 
yeah, it's just fun to have new tools and you new unique tools as well. So here's the uh, finished product of the spoon. It's always nice putting that last layer of oil on. Okay, so thanks for watching everybody and be sure to check out my other videos. I'm going to put a little link here to the left for the video I think you would be really interested in watching.